Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jag Bar. I got a very, very special episode here. I'm here with a very talented animator, Skip Jones. He has animated some of the, the biggest cartoons, I would say features, right? Um, in, in my lifetime, so this is very, very exciting. I want to talk to you about a very special cartoon, though, that you've been involved with, and that is Xanadu. I want to know about Xanadu. Oh. I'm just joking. Okay, well, I'm I know joking. I, and I worked on Xanadu. I know you did, that's oh, why I brought okay. it up. We're here to talk about okay. Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. Dragon's Lair, a fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. You control the actions of a daring adventurer finding his way through the castle of a dark wizard who has enchanted it with treacherous monsters and obstacles. You're working at Disney, right? And Don Bluth says, I'm gonna leave. Now, was this like a big moment, like a big coup? Like, who's with me? Who's coming with me? Kind of a thing. Well, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like that. I was like going on a cattle drive. Now, there's a picture online of the Exodus, and it's Bluth driving a Toyota pickup. And it looks like there's about 10 or 15 guys. That's right. I'm in the back of that truck. Are you in that, are you in that picture? Yes. Yeah. That was the original crew, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was like seven of us animators, and we're all like, <laughs> I had a bunch of hair. But I am in that truck. That was the exodus, and uh, a lot of us were naive. We're like, yeah, we just quit our jobs at Disney. Right. And then Which next, people, like their whole lifetimes, they fight to try to get in yes. to Disney. Yeah. Whether it's working at the park or, you know, That's working right. in the studios. You know, oh my God. And you guys yeah. are like, we're out of here. Yeah, we're out of here. No longer, you know, are they delivering tea cakes to my room at 10 o'clock every day. Right. Wait a minute. I'm in a garage. <laughs> anyway, no, it was cool. I mean, it was great working on those projects, including Dragons Lair, Space Ace, and Secret of Nim. You guys have a pretty big hit with Secret of Nim. I actually remember going to the movies with my mom to see that, um, and it was um, something that I'd never seen before as far as, uh, you know, a kid's animated sh uh, movie. It was very dark. It was very yeah. um, scary. It was scary to me. I was a little guy, you know. Um, but We thought that was okay since Disney did Bambi, and it was like, you know. Right, right. But I mean, it Dumbo. was a, a, a very huge um, shift as far as, um, you know, from one studio, Disney was doing the big animated shows, and then you have Don Bluth, and you come out with this really crazy, creepy, dark, yeah, you know, yeah. story, you know. Well, you know, there's so, there's a lot of uh, tendrils that feed into what created that. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, Disney was kind of drifting at the time. The, the leadership, you know, was, they weren't sure. They were spending, they spent like six years on uh, Fox and the Hound and, and some movies that were kind of, it was not their, their peak performance. No, and I, I've heard stories with other people who have worked on Fox and the Hound, and that, that was like their burnout moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Obviously, it was a big there was transitional yeah. period, and so that's really kind of that was the that, that triggered us. Uh, it was a catalyst for us to go break off and do the blue thing. So let's talk about let's talk about Dragon's Lair. Um, you guys did Secret of Nymph, and Dragon's Lair came afterwards, or was that something that was happening at the same time? Uh, no, I think it, it came after. Yeah, I think because we were waiting for the financing to get solidified for the next project. And so this thing had come down the pike where we could create this interactive video game. Technologies were new. Right. Uh, but someone had created the uh, software and the hardware to have an arcade Rick game. Dyer. That's right. Rick Dyer was the creator of that very, technology. Very good, man. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and, and he came to you guys or you came? Yeah, he yeah. came to us because we needed the... Uh, he needed someone that could uh, create the animation Got in, uh, in short order and, and efficiently. That's right. I think he was, uh, he loved Secret of Nim, and that stirred him to yes. contact. As often guys. happens, one thing leads to another. Right. You know, work begets work, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. So it's like self-advertising, you know, promotion. And, uh, so he comes to you and he says, I got this new technology. Um, we're going to make this interactive cartoon on, on a laser disc. And at that time, nobody was really talking about laser discs. That was, you know, sort yeah. of. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Look at the size of this record. It's like a record, yeah. 
It's a shiny record. And you know the interesting thing was the 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 pro. Uh, I think the the electronics and what he had created was uh, like branching uh, choices for scenes instead right. of a, a lateral or a linear kind of mm -hmm. approach for like what we've done in animation. You've got one scene, and you know you can have several different branching right. choices based right. on the gameplay. If a, someone uh, hits the right uh, key at the right time, you get this scene, right. you know, or this one, or this one, or he dies and turns into a skeleton. You know? Right, and then you'd have deaths depending on yeah. whatever choice you decided to make too. So you not right. only were you making he'd go here and be victorious, but if you went here, he'd fall into the pit. And, yeah, you know that sort and of thing. you know what? People's parents all across the land were like going, "I thought I had a jar of quarters." It's like you know. It's well, like, that was a fifty percent um, increase <laughs> in yeah. uh, you know. You could play a game of Donkey Kong at that time for twenty five cents, or and just for fifty cents, you could play Dragon's Lair for about you know. 30 seconds. That and, was the thing. And that was it. And it's like, you know, it lure you on. And you're like, whoa, this is looking great. It's like that, 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 that. You're like, okay, I need more. Were you guys, did you guys have any idea that what it was that you were making was going to be no. something? No. So was it basically like, hey, here's what we have to animate. Yep. Let's just. Yeah. And, you know, another eye-opening uh, aspect to animating for a project such as this was yeah. I would get a scene where my instruction was, uh, Dirk flies in, you know, he, he hits this button, jumps up, ricochets, does two or three bounces, and is off, and it's like a third of a second. Yeah. And it's like, what? Is that even possible? And it was possible, actually, because, you know, uh, you, you can make something move that fast, faster than we had had to do for a feature, actually, for the game. Right. But everything worked, and it ended up, and, wow, it could have been faster once we saw it, you know, right. with the gameplay. And right. so you were just getting pieces of like, okay, I just need to, to draw dirt doing this and not having any concept of what came before or after? No, 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 we would, of course, no, we'd have to know. I mean, as far as, as, far as your job, like an animator. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, it, it would be kind of uh, uh, modular in that respect because okay. it had to fit you know, as it may be a result from several different scenes. Got it. But we were aware, you know, it was very interesting to look at the way the storyboards in the, in the, you know, the war room, the scene playing. Oh, I can room, imagine. Because, every, it, you know, it looked like some weird, you know, map of Paris or something, you know, with just these offshoot roads, you know. How, big were, how big were the cards? The what? The, the, uh, the cards. That you yeah, actually, you know, I mean the, the storyboard The pens. storyboard pens, yeah. yeah. start off as just like little flash cards. They're like three, three by five? Yep. And they were just pinned all over yeah, the so wall. Yeah, so 10 million, you know, aluminum push pins. And you could just walk through it. We, you know, we board it out. We pitch it in front of everybody and see if it worked. So you guys would do the the work um, like a traditional animator would for this. Yes. And they take it and they uh, digitize it and they put it on that laser disc. Yeah. And then were you were you able to see how the procedure like like like. Um, what progressed. Progressed, yeah. Yes. You, were you able to see it and then go like, oh, that doesn't work, we got to go back and fix it? Yeah, sometimes. The, yeah. But you know, unlike today, oh my God, so much of what we did, from the drawn, you know, like this is a, this is a Dirk let's, image. Let's hold this up here. This was just like uh, some ink drawings I did when we were developing Dirk, so I, I was involved with that yeah. too. Uh, but from this paper, this animation paper, which has the peg holes to right. register all the traditional stuff. After we would animate a scene, it went to a Xerox machine that was made out of wood. Okay. It's kind of like, you know, back there when I think about it, it's actually made out of wood. You know, you're expecting a covered wagon to go by. Right. Uh, but uh, from that, it would get Xerox onto plastic and then hand painted by a team of la mostly ladies. Right. Uh, and it was all traditionally hand done. It was, something was kind of neat about that. But then it was digitized and put into the machine. It was some of the first digitally uh, adapted animation, I think. Wow. It, it, I think the time period, you know, you had a uh, big boom in the arcades, right, happening. Um, everybody was playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Right. So it was just like, it felt like all the cylinders were firing at the right time, and then boom, here comes Dragon's Lair. Yes. I mean, some of the art, on that is just 
is absolutely beautiful. Well, we, you know, we, we had to do it kind of fast, but still, it was, we, I, would, I would say we took our time to do it right. Right. Well, there, there was a scene where um, Chuck and I were playing, and it's um, Dirk is walking on this uh, path, and there's these, uh, like, booms that are swinging around in circles, and there's all of this, uh, like, uh, vines or um, yes. thorns. Oh, yeah, I know. And there's scene. this red specter that's floating. Right. And it's like... Man, I magical. It's just so, it's so amazing. Yeah. So amazing. It felt looking. like magic when we were doing it, actually. Well, it looks like magic. It looks like I mean, my kids somehow look we, at we that today. Got into the we got into the vision of it as we were creating it. It, 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 it really normal. is a testament because my kids play it and they love it and, you know, I was playing with uh, my son uh, Space Ace and he's he's laughing out loud at some of the stuff and it's just I mean, man, just, you know, Dexter hanging off the motorcycle and screaming, and he's thinking it, it's just hilarious. You so, know? you know, and actually the voice of uh, Space Ace is a friend of mine. Will Finn. It. Will Finn and uh, Jeff Etter. Okay. He, he, did, uh, he did some of the voices for that, too. So yeah, you guys were doing the voices too. So the animators were also doing the voices. Yes. Yeah. Well, that that's sort of a tradition that goes all the way back to Popeye. You know, the voice of Popeye was one of the uh, some animator sitting right. off in a dark corner. They heard him laugh, and he's like, "Wait a minute, can we have you read? You know, for this?" They said, "Wait a minute, we don't want to spend any more money." It was part of that. Yeah. So, uh, or we're out of money. <laughs> we're out of money. Does anybody? Can anybody else do voices here? Yes. Do it well. We all did a lot. I shot on camera. I mean, we were sitting there in our boxer shorts in the hot summer, kind of like the heat wave we're having right. now, in Don's garage, sitting at the camera. I did that too. I painted cells. Wow. The the editing on Space Ace, you said was was very fast. Yeah. And you guys did that on purpose. Yes. Were you guys just trying to push the limits as far as yeah how to edit an animated piece? I think, you know, to tell you the truth, maybe we were trying to get more quarters. I forgot. It seemed to me, it's like, wait a minute, we got this thing working, and we had analyzed uh, Space A, uh, or Dragon's Lair. And, uh, and it's like, it just seemed like it could be faster. Okay. But then I think the problem was we forced uh, players to have to, you, you know, you die, and you'd have to relive all those, you know, yes. setup scenes instead yes. of sort of restarting closer down closer. the road. Oh, that would have been, oh. that would have been yeah. money if that was the case. Yeah, I know, but we were, you know, someone was buying Rolls Royces off of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. I was still in a Volkswagen bug. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was intentional. <laughs> I yep, think. Yeah, but but you know, I think Chuck brought up a good point uh, on the uh, the last episode was that you know it was almost being cut like you would cut something in 2015 you know in the early 80s you would sit on shots right a little bit longer space ace is just boom 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 and then it's you're out then you can take a breath and right. I, I mean there was parts in the game where I was I wasn't even breathing. No, you actually you'd, you'd either not breathe or you'd be out of breath. Yeah, yeah. and so it's and then you feel it's, like you run a boom, and then, marathon. You, then you're right into the next scene and it's pop 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 pop. You know it was totally cool though. Actually, we had the games in the lobby and so mm -hmm. we could like reach around the back of it and just reset it. <laughs> <laughs> I know maybe that would like yeah. make, make you Kids mad. don't try this at home. Okay, there's you know <laughs> could get shocked. It's very dangerous. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we had a key. I forgot what it was, but hey, we made it. We we should be able to play it for free. Do you uh, do you ever wish that you had a cabinet in the, in the I house? I do. Yeah, I probably have gotten all the way through. I never did actually get all the way through. I don't know if any of us did, even though we were able to play it free. Some of them were tricky and difficult because you know there was the mystery. You had to try it twenty times to find out what you were actually supposed to do. And even though we had created it, I didn't know all the secret pathways. Right. Well, Dragon's Lair is, is very easy because it's like up, down, left, and right. Yeah. Space Ace gets into this yeah, weird, like 3D chess. weird nebulous where it's like, oh, that looks like it's, it's right, but it's, oh, it's actually up. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's yeah. like just kind of like up there. It's, it's cheap. To me, it's cheap because it's just like, man, you know that was right. <laughs> Look at the, you know yes. he's supposed to run right. And then it's up? Okay, here we go. Well, I want to thank my guest. Actually, I'm your guest today at your home. Well. Jag bar on the prowl, right? That's how we do it. Skip. Uh, 
thank you so much for my um, pleasure man it's been fun talking with it's, you guys it's been a pleasure for me i mean this is like i said this is a big uh this is a big video game in my in my life and and just uh you know coming up as a little guy space ace and dragon's lair were were big heroes to me and it's just it's well i'm, I'm happy to know i've uh done something to uh help shape absolutely a generation of yes of uh, fans right and, uh, you seem to have turned out okay. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Not too know. many ticks or anything, right? No, okay. not that I know. Not yet. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate you and, and having pleasure. us take a look at some of the uh, artwork here and walk down memory lane on Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. And just, well, that's been fun. It's really awesome, man. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, guys, pleasure. that's it. We'll see you guys next week on the Jag Bar. Take it easy. <laughs>